It's no secret that Star Citizen is an ambitious game, trying to build a first-person universe of varied experiences across multiple star systems. But at its core will always be the spaceship. And the process of making a spaceship always begins with the concept artist. And we've had no shortage of greats contribute to our legacy of vehicles. From Star Wars superstars like Ryan Church and David Hobbins, to Star Trek luminaries like Jim Martin. From the art departments of Godzilla, Matrix, Blade Runner, and Dune like Emmanuel Shui and George Hull, to the dedicated CIG legends like Paul Jones and Alberto Petronio, and a whole host of folks in between too numerous to mention, the origin of our spacecraft are as numerous as their manufacturers. But there's one person who's participated in the birth of more Star Citizen spacecraft than any other. With more than 20 vehicles to his name so far, he bridges the gaps between manufacturers and has helped to define or refine many of their styles over the years. And in this year's special Ship Showdown Showcase, we brought the prolific Gavin Rothery into our office for your chance to meet the man and celebrate just a fraction of his contribution to this project. And because I just think he's neat. Let's go. I've got toothpaste all about the go. You have toothpaste for yeah. I think working as a concept artist is great. I like the way I get to spend time with my dogs. I really appreciate that. I've got my dogs around me all day. I get my spaceships, my dogs, you know, and I get to come up to Manchester and hang out with you guys for a bit. It's awesome. Can you get it? Yeah. You use toothpaste for it. Beautiful. Oh, I'll do. That's right. I'm an artist. <laughs> So a concept artist is usually a human. That might change. We've seen these AIs, they're coming for us. So a concept artist is an artist who comes in at the start of a job and works to a technical brief, which is often just writing. There might be a few reference images in there occasionally. We don't really tend to work like that. We'll just get a technical brief and you've got to come there and you've just got to realise things. Usually you're working in somewhat in isolation. There's base touching with like art directors and such, but like a lot of my job is me just working at home in my studio, just kind of getting on with things, having like regular touch-ins. And uh, that sounds weird. <laughs> touching base frequently. And just uh, pushing the design forward basically. So I'm given a brief and a deadline and I'm expected to metamorphosize that brief into something that can fulfill that brief and look really cool on the clock. There's a few things that make a good concept artist, really. You've got to be able to get along with people and like fit into a team, that's first and foremost, because it's more remote, so it can take longer to get relationships going with people. So that stuff becomes more important. game project particularly, there's lots of things changing in development. So you've got to be able to approach your work with a mindset of like, not being too precious about it. You can do a bunch of work on things and it can all be beautiful. And that could just completely change and you have to do something else which is beautiful. And you've got to just be able to wake up every morning and kind of deliver that. Whenever you see a good concept artist, you'll be looking at somebody that is able to do that and figured it out in their life. So Star Citizen is a, a very unique beast. I've been in the games industry for a long time. I've worked in movies, I've, you know, I've, I've been around the block, I've done stuff. Star Citizen is one of those projects that's got such definitively harsh metrics that you need to fit that I've never worked on another project like it. You can look at the Millennium Falcon, you know, it looks pretty on the outside, it looks pretty on the inside. Those two things don't go together. So with Star Citizen, everything has to fit. And I remember when I first started on doing some of the bigger ships like many years ago, that was a new thing to me because 
Other projects don't really consider that. They'll have, once you're inside a ship, you're basically inside a magic little universe and, you know, things can be completely different scales and people generally don't worry about that stuff too much. With Star Citizen, it's all cohesive and it all has to fit. And so when we're designing it, we'll start with the exterior. We always do options for things. So the first week of a new ship design is me doing, like just blasting out options as quickly as I can. When I'm designing a ship, I work in 3D and 2D. So my actual pipeline is I do all my 3D in Maya. So I get the brief and I just go straight into 3D and just start blocking out ships and basically sketching in 3D. I've been doing this for a long time as a concept artist and I found that working in shapes and volume, it's just, it's just a very natural way to work. It's a sculptural medium. I always just get straight into 3D and I don't really work from one angle to start off with. I literally work with a 3D shape and just work all around it to begin. So I work my way in from blocking 3D shapes. So this is all done in Maya. And I like to put four or five options together so that we can all have a good sit down and choose. And there'll be a range of things in there. I try and make them all quite different. Quite often you'll have a favourite, but that doesn't really matter because that might not be the way the ship ends up going. And then we, ultimately, whichever way it ends up going, that becomes your favourite because you work on it more and it, it comes to life. And then once we have a, that kind of feedback after the first week, we'll have more of a direction and we might push forwards with a couple of designs and work a couple up a bit more. Then after another week or two, we'll nail it down to one and just keep pushing forwards with, with one direction. We work in four stages for the actual design and then a promo stage at the end. So we'll normally go first pass exterior, first pass interior, second pass exterior, second pass interior. And through those two processes, we'll establish the look of the outside, establish what the inside needs to do, make the inside fit the outside as best we can. Then we usually have to have a second pass on the outside just to change a few things because the interior has got hard, hard limits on it and quite often they'll be a bit sticking out and we'll need to have a second pass over the exterior just to finish it all up and you know, just put all the nice little polish and sort of spanky bits on there. And once that's done and we know that's not going to change, we can get in there and like completely trick out the interior and finish it up. In Star Citizen, the rule of cool is a term that we use when we're putting things together, putting the art together. It's concerned with the last 20% of the design, basically. So we have so much functionality we have to put in the design, like when we're starting on a ship. We start off with a brief, it's got a whole bunch of requirements a ship would need. And first and foremost, when you're working as a concept artist, you're there to do a job and you've got to fit in the project to make sure you can deliver. So I need to make sure that my concepts have got all of the things that the um, build team are gonna need that the players are ultimately gonna want. So I've got to consider things like components, metrics, heights of handles, heights of steps, how doors work, how ramps work, angles of things. I've got to consider things like the components the ship needs, the facilities the crew need to be able to live on the ship, work on the ship. There's just all kinds of things to consider. So the rule of cool is when you've got all of that stuff done, you've got it in there, and you've got it looking cool, it fits with the brand, it looks nice. And this is where we get to use that 20% to kind of push the brand forwards, which is where the development in the ship comes from. As soon as I've got something that I want to render, I'll go into Keyshot. I'll take my Maya file into Keyshot. Keyshot's a product presentation, 3D package, specializing in beauty renders. So I can just get in there with materials. I've done this for such a long time and on so many ships now, I've got all my material libraries set for the different uh, brands and stuff, so I can work really quickly. And I'll get some pretty renders, some nice light, and just gives a better indication of what the ship might look like further down the road. So the fifth milestone, MS5, is promo artwork. So once we've done all the design work, and I'll have done a ton of rendering along the way to put updates on the boards, but it's all worky stuff and disposable stuff. And once we get to promo, that's when these ships get the proper setup and get the proper time and love. And then, that, then those renders from Keyshot become promo pieces. And that's all finished in Photoshop. So my favorite brand in Star Citizen is Crusader, which would make one of my favorite ships, the Ares. Because it's just, it's just, I love doing that. It's got that classic black and white sci-fi look. It's just. It's the Bjork all is full of love music video. It's that, it's that classic, classic cool. But I am very partial to Argo. I do like a big orange space lump. 
and the mole and the raft. I just think those, oh, I've got some other goosebumps talking about them, my, ch my children. Um, I remember when Paul Jones and I were working on, when we first did the mole, we knew we'd got something really good when we finished the mole. It's like we got the artwork done at the end of the job and we were just like, that's a nice ship. Then when we got to do the raft and we got to push it forwards again, that was, that was a real pleasure working on the raft. But I've got to say, my, my all-time favourite ship, I've got to say the Gladius, it's the first one I did. When I first saw the Squadron videos that came out a while back, and I got to see Mark Hamill standing in front of that Gladius and running his hand down it and being all gooey over it, I'm looking at it thinking, that's Luke Skywalker's, like, running his hands all over my ship. Like, good job. Life as a concept artist, it can, be a, it can be a little bit on the fringes sometimes and you can feel like you're a little bit out there. But um, one of the things that I really love about it the most is being able to kind of run my own time. And there is an element of nine to five to it. I don't have to be at a desk at nine o'clock every morning. I don't have to commute. I get to spend all day with my dogs. I've got two little Westie friends. And, you know, getting those, getting my girls curled up under my desk and just blasting some music and, you know, rolling in at like 9.45 with a coffee and just getting going, you know, it's, it's just nice. It's just got that little bit more chill than you kind of commute to the office and nine o'clock, sit down, here we go. I mean, that can translate to like late nights sometimes, you know, there's, there's a lot of grind and crunch, but when you're doing, I'm designing spaceships for Star Citizen, it's awesome, it's an awesome job and I love it. And it really isn't a chore, you know, you get your late nights, your late nights at work, you put your music on, you put the kettle on and you just, just get on with it, it's awesome. Time flies. <laughs> so what did we learn this week? Well, no doubt that many of your all-time favorite spacecraft sprang forth from the efforts of Gavin Rothery. That from the Aegis Gladius to the upcoming RSI Zeus, there is no doubt that he can make a beautiful spaceship and that with his ability to span the styles of every single manufacturer in Star Citizen, we're always excited to see what he's going to do next. If that didn't get through, know that I tried. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the people and process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. It's time to get our factional fight back on in Pyro. <laughs>